Here we have a 2008 GMC Savannah, 4.3 liter engine with a check engine light on. I retrieved uh, the Dynasty treble codes and I have four treble codes related to oxygen sensors. The description uh, relates to the resistance for the heaters for all four oxygen sensors. Bank one sensor one, bank one sensor two, bank two sensor one, and bank two sensor two. It's not common for all this sense these heaters to go bad so we're going to find out what's going on and there's another turbo code right underneath engine cooling temperature below thread holes that could be a thermostat issue but we're going to focus on the o2 sensor heaters first all right so here we have the wiring diagram for the oxygen sensors we have four turbo codes for o2 sensors related to the heaters and it's not very common for all the heaters to go bad at the same time so whenever you get a treble code like this, then more, most likely you're looking for a wiring issue. Now, if we look here on the top, we have a relay that supplies voltage to both of the fuses on the top. The O2 sensor uh, one, fuse 46, 10 amp, and O2 sensor two, fuse 56, 10 amp. So you have two 10 amps. The Heaters are connected in parallel and you notice each one of the heaters has the same color wire, the pink wire, to the heaters. So they're sharing the same color. That usually means that they, that is the supply line, the voltage side. Now the control side is here at the bottom. The engine control module is the one that is in charge of controlling each one of the heaters so if you look at uh, o2 sensor bank one sensor one letter e that's connector e the computer grounds this heater by supplying a ground and this ground will be in duty cycle and once the o2 sensor reaches specific temperature then the computer might just turn off that driver and that happens for each one of the o2 sensors uh, as far as the heater circuit the computer controls the ground side on the heater so the way you're going to connect first of all you want to make sure that you're getting battery voltage to the heaters so you're going to hook up a multimeter you set one lead to ground and the other lead you connect it to terminal d which you should be able to read battery voltage or charging voltage when the vehicle is running and that voltage should be constant as the vehicle is running and when you start a car if you hook up your another meter or you could move the same meter but now you go to the control side so you ground your meter and the other lead you back probe the control side of the heater and the computer will pulse the heaters on and off in a duty cycle mode and what we're going to do we're going to be back probing several oxygen sensors as on the heater circuit the control side to see if there is any any problem as far as the control do we have the computer grounding on and off the heaters well we're going to find out that's where we're going to start that's how we're going to connect the multimeter or a lab, a lab scope so what i'm going to do I'll, I'll, i will be hooking up a multimeter a lab scope and a power probe so you can see the difference between these three tools and you're going to see that the oscilloscope is more efficient and you'll be able to see it why sometimes there's cer certain information that you might miss from uh, a multimeter because the multimeter might not be fast enough to switch from positive to ground as the computer is cycling the o2 sensor uh, circuit so that's what we're going to do next okay so here we have an oscilloscope connected to both of the heaters i'm using an oscilloscope a multimeter and a power probe you will be able to see the difference between these three tools. The multimeter gives you voltage. The power probe, you have the lights being turned on and off, cycling. And the oscilloscope actually gives you the waveform. And this is a more accurate uh, signal that you'll be able to see. And we'll compare each one of them so you can see the big difference. The multimeter will just show you around like 0 0.96 millivolts. That's the ground from the PCM. The power probe is fluctuating the voltage up and down, cycling because the computer is cycling the sensor. And here you have a waveform from a scope. 
and I'm connected to both of the heaters in the front and in the rear. I'm back pro to both of the controls of the heaters. And you can see a waveform from the PCM pulsating the, the heaters. So the heaters are pulsated in duty cycle. So you'll be able to see the duty cycle here on the scope. The computer is grinding on and off the, the heaters of the O2 sensors. You can also be able to zoom into the waveforms and actually see a better waveform. So here are the three devices and the scope is the one that's gonna help you the most, especially to catch intermediate faults. If you have an intermediate fault, it will show much better on the scope. Here we have uh, two channels, two either being controlled by PCM. We get the power probe cycling on and off, the voltage and ground from the PCM, the fluctuations, and the multimeter just shows you uh, the intervals. So the multimeter is not fast enough to fit to hold this to the ground, but the scope will be your much better indication. This is why the scope will be very useful to catch any of the phone. So here are the two different ways to catch the meters, whether you have a multimeter, a power probe, or a computer scope. That's not enough to use what we have available, but at least you get a strong information from one of these tools. An oscilloscope will be great so you can see how the PCM pulses the heaters on and off. You'll be able to see a square waveform because the PCM supplies the ground. As the temperature changes from the heaters and you start to get more activity, the PCM will change the duty cycle of these heaters. So you'll be able to see when the PCM st stops controlling the heaters. All right, so this is where I always tell everyone to do a visual inspection. Notice that this harness here, it's missing this plastic insulation. So this wire has room for wiggle. And usually this wiggleness, when transmission gets shifted, it will do this. It will rub against the edges and it could cut the wire. So if I just look underneath, look at that. There is our intermediate problem causing these treble codes for transmission and O2 sensor heater codes. Visual inspection guys. Always see if you look at a harness, any harness that might be rubbing against an edge could cause it to rub against it and peel off. During the testing of the scopes, nothing showed up because this problem was intermittent and it was because these wires were making contact and the contact was not happening at all times. It all depend on the movement of the engine and the transmission. So here you'll be able to see that the two wires will intermittently touch causing these treble codes for all the oxygen sensors. So it was not the heaters, it's wiring issue. Since the problem was intermediate, uh, we found out that the wires were the main cause of the issue. Most of the time you're going to see a wiring issue on intermediate failures. So always check your harness, always lift up the wiring harness, see underneath if it's rubbing against any kind of metal and it creates friction and the peels the wire and sometimes it will touch the ground or touch together and create faults. In this case, that was the fault. Once we fix these wires, erase treble codes and scan the vehicle again, the codes didn't came back.